Hello, this is Grant, and we're back to another episode of Dead Rising 2's Master Run. This one, we're going to be picking up the Barn Burn mission, which has two, uh, I guess, I guess I call them the kind of like redneckish folk that they've decided they have the great idea that they're going to hide in, into one of the dressing rooms and they're going to stop the zombies from getting them by setting the door on fire. Well, this doesn't work quite as well as they planned, and now they're stuck in a room with a burning fire. It is the one case where you can put out the fire with the fire extinguisher, which is kind of nice. You can actually use it, as you would expect. So, that's kind of neat. In my opinion, it seems like they should have used that in other places. Like, maybe just something small, like there's a burning area, and if you happen to bring a fire extinguisher, you get in a some kind of secret area. I'm a big fan of stuff like that. As someone who's trying to go through and talk about like optimal runs and whatnot... Requirements like that are really cool because then I know, okay, how can I factor a fire extinguisher in? And then you learn where those are. But too bad. Maybe in the future we'll see more of those. She's one of the, the characters you end up playing in poker in the anti up mission back at the safe house. I'm, sur I was <laughs> I'm really surprised they didn't make some kind of them being related but dating joke. That seems like. This would be the perfect time for that. I don't think they actually say. I think, I think that's his sister. I think she says that, but I don't actually know. I don't want to put words in their mouth. This is actually where we save Katie. It's a green room to the left there. You can come back here anytime. You can't go further into the stadium, but it's a little neat thing. We want to do that mission first, so we can go do Brains Over Brawn, which is those guys over playing D and D, and they'll join much faster if you have someone in your party, which we have. What's her name? Trixie Lynn. So we're going to go over here. You can usually go get a shotgun. I don't know if I even bothered to look to see if he was holding at that time. We're going to want shotguns for the Chuck the Role Model boss fight. Because as I learned doing one of my run-throughs, the shotgun is quite effective against him compared to literally no other weapon. Other fun fact, South Plaza is under construction in this game, and in the last game, it was the North Plaza. I don't know, I feel like there's some kind of connection. I also, I went too early through the, through the door. It happens. Trixie Lynn, in particular, has a big habit of getting caught on zombies. Luckily, in this one, they seem to redo how survivors interact with zombies. In Dead Rising 1, if they got caught up, you pretty much had to go back and release them, otherwise they would just constantly be held down. In this one, it seems like they're only held for a little while, and eventually they break through, and then they can just walk out. Like, if they get caught, it's really just a time inconvenience. They're not going to die like they would in one. I'm sure there's some actual reason for that, either just AI improvements, or maybe the zombies are not as hard on survivors, or the, or the survivors move faster. But they're definitely, it's, escort missions are a lot easier in this game. In one, I would often have to go and clear a path and then like literally lead them through. Whereas in this game, they can clear their own path and it's almost detrimental for you to go and help them because it's just going to make more zombies come over that you just have to deal with. You're never going to deal with them all. And then you just waste a bunch of time when you can rather just say, go over there. I'm assuming that high was in ASCII characters. That uh, binary. I have to take class on this, so I'll, I'm sure I could translate that. So they don't say, like, what game they're playing. They have some name. It's like Serpents of Something's Ladder. I don't know. It's like, it sounds like an amalgam of probably like D&D, &D, sh Shoots and Ladders, and I don't know what. If you look at the board, it looks like it's it looks like it's some weird, like, shoots and ladders, sorry parody. And of course, Curse is over there in a dress. I don't know what, what that's about. But <laughs> these guys are actually all very good in combat if you give them weapons. So, if you're having trouble, give them some weapons. There's plenty of 2x4s and stuff around. So, there's that. And I don't know where they got all the pizza and food, but I wonder if they could have stayed here for a while. <laughs> They think Chuck's really cool because, oh, he has a girl with him. He must meet people. And he, you're going to go take him back to the safe house, and there are going to be tons of girls, and 
Have an awesome Vegas trip. <laughs> I tried to cool and take off his blade with that saw, and I just hit I hit the ladder. There's a lot of cool weapons I never get to use. One of them I always felt was those little chainsaw blades. Like in one, you can carry around a toolbox. And what's nice is it's like it's a good weapon, but then when it breaks, you get three of those. So it's like it scratches that itch where it's efficient and they're pretty good in fights, but they're kind of hard to pick up again. They're a cool weapon. They, they can clear cl they clear crowds out pretty well because you can just throw it straight down the line. I get a little turned around here. But we're going to go take on Chuck the Role Model, who is over in near the Americana Casino. And he is a very tough fight, especially for this early in the game. Also, he is in the only bathroom you can use to save in that area. Like, you can either go all the way to the end, other end of South Plaza, or you have to go to Royal Flush Plaza, I think. Like, there's not one in the Americana Casino. So, oh, and also the... He's in the men's, but if you go to the women's, that's out of order, so you can't use any of the toilets. So, half the reason I hate fighting him is just the fact that I know that I have not saved in a while. So I try to make a point and do it, but I'm pretty... I feel like I have a good strategy down. He used to absolutely destroy me. I had so much trouble with this guy. So, and in fact, I used to, like, even up until, like, my second or third run through the game, I was still... I was just using, like, a light machine gun from the Palisades, or... Uh, from wherever I pick him up, the, like, I think it was usually the Yucatan one. And I would just like go as hard as I can on him. He would just still walk straight up to you and slash. And I would try to dodge, but it was difficult. And then the shotgun is significantly better. I feel like there must be some kind of defense system in play. Because in both games, high fire rate attacks don't deal nearly as much damage as single hard hitting attacks. And maybe that's just how the damage is for like shotguns and versus machine guns. But I would not be surprised if it was the case that say to make them strong there was just saying like okay this attack deals 100 damage but every attack has like 20 points knocked off. Cuz that would make sense then that like consecutive attacks would have their effects weakened but then shotgun wouldn't the shotgun wouldn't matter as much, because, like, say the shotgun does 300, well, 300 minus 20 is less effect than, like, 50 minus 20 several times. So here I had to go back and escort El Rod, just to make sure he wasn't hung up, but he, he got here on his own. I got quite the little party here. I got a shirtless dude, I got a dude in a dress. I don't know what... I wonder if he had to be in a dress for the game and just role playing it, or if he just likes likes drag. <laughs> so here I'm just gonna stick them all in the side bathroom and hopefully take this guy out. There's not a lot of food near him, but to be fair, you can go to that uh, restaurant over there, Move so it's not there. too bad. Move and you can there. sometimes find stuff in there, but it's definitely you need to be prepared for this fight and bring your own food and your own weapons. I think he has, he's kind of a cool character, and they definitely do this really cool, like, green backlighting here. So his premise is that he was in Cure, that zombie group, and he was inspired by what he thinks Chuck did of starting this, this, like, outbreak. And he wants to carry out Chuck's work. Particularly, he seems to be, have gone insane just from the trauma of working so hard to protect zombies, and then... All of a sudden, they're attacking him and eating people. Just like that complete 180 has been too much for him. Hmm. I don't know how he got a zombie in here, but... It's... <laughs> I like how nonchalant he's going to open up this door. 
So I'm helping now. I'm a soldier for the cause, man. No! This is not the way to help. But basically his premise is trying to purposely infect people. Oh, I see. And he is quite tough because he's so erratic. Like if you can tell by his movements, he just kinda like runs around, zigzags. He pops in and out. He is very similar to Cliff from the first game, the uh, Vietnam War vet you fight, in that he he can go in the stalls and teleport around, much like Cliff could go up in the ceiling and pop out anywhere. So this isn't my best fight with him, but it goes pretty well. The shotgun is pretty damaging. If you want to, I could have do I could have dodged out that way. I'm usually a lot better. And if you have the dodge roll, it's pretty simple. But we're making pretty quick work of him, and I have healing items, so I'm not too worried. I'm only mainly concerned if he, like, corners me when I'm trying to get away. Like, there, he just snags me, and then he's stunned, luckily. I'll admit, a lot of times I want to show off, and I'll be like, yeah, I could go heal and be safe, but, come on. I was hoping that these would have healing items, but they do not. They have a... Cardboard boxes are like one where it's like they generally have some kind of basis to them, but it's weird. It's random, but at certain times of the day, it'll be usually be something. I'm not really clear because I don't think they would put that much room in, like that much work into the cardboard boxes, but who knows. And at every night at 7 o'clock, the zombies get harder. You'll remember that from the first game. Still no explanation about why that is. It's just a thing. And they just happen to know when it's 7 o'clock. Who knows? So here I'm just going looking around. I think actually now I'm looking, was that a orange juice bottle? I think. I was just interrupted by the cutscene. I didn't see what was in it. I feel bad now. I can see all my full mistakes. So here, oh I remember now, yeah. So this fight doesn't go well because I decided to eat the swallowed hamburger, which caused me to throw up. And so, if I'm holding anything when I do that, I'll drop it, so you'll see me constantly switching out. And it kind of so it comes at inconvenient times. I was thinking about doing a run-through of this game where I have to drink alcohol every time I see it. Or maybe just, hey, I have to carry, say I'll be level 50, I have to carry a beer around all the time. And every time I stop puking, I have to start puking again. Just because it leads to stuff like this where... Oh yeah, I got him. I can totally kill him. And then, oh wait, no, I'm throwing up. And I gotta pick my shotgun up again. And then he hits me. And it's just like, oh, almost. But I triumph in the end. And we get a nice little cutscene of his demise. Dude might be insane, but he's definitely... He has some dedication and passion for what he does. So he's got Vin, and he does not want to come a zombie, so he just straight up kills himself. Bold move. Bold move indeed. So here we gotta go up and kill it. I don't think I actually end up doing it this time, but oh yeah, I accidentally let her go. I always find it funny to use the urinal next to her to save first, because one, I haven't saved in a while, and also it's just... Like, oh, wait, hold that thought. Gotta, gotta pee. Okay, now let's go, uh, let's get you out of those chains. Without washing my hands, of course. <laughs> but, that's just me. I think it's funny, because that weird juxtaposition and how crazy it is in that circumstance. But, we're also going to go pick up this luscious lady who is a drunk who has been passed out the entire time this has been happening, and you have to carry her. And she has another good option to use the as a chick to get the D&D guys. So you'll notice here, if you have a survivor near you when you push a wheelchair, they'll get in. That's huge. Now it doesn't matter much because I have more than one, but when you only have one survivor, even if they can walk fine, it's just so fast. I would recommend it. And you can just push through all the zombies, it's awesome. Great, great, great object to have around. In fact, there's a couple key wheelchairs that are obviously put there for you to use. 
Like when we do shell shocked, he can't walk that well. But there's that wheelchair that spawns literally like the one we used right there, so that helps. She's also another good option here to be pushed, but since I can carry her, it's not that big of a deal. Particularly the people you have to escort instead of carry. Those are the ones you really wanna really use it on. But anytime I have one survivor I and I find one, I I use it right away. It's still helpful. I think it's stupid you gotta drop stuff to use it. Particularly like to check your watch, you have to drop any heavy weapons you have. That kinda irks me. You can check your missions through the map and that will pause time, so I usually try to do that, but sometimes I just wanna pop into the watch for a second because it's it is faster for me as a player. Once again, Trixie Lynn is lagging behind. It'd be cool if they to see what kind of effort they put into creating these people. Because I know they vary on stats and stuff, and some are cowardly, some are brave, some are stupid, some just, like, they have really bad fighting stats, but they like to fight, some get sidetracked, uh, some will only use certain weapons or won't give up their current weapon. I think there's a lot of things that go into determining what they are, but I don't know. As a player, they feel mostly same Z, or they just aren't like telegraph properly like in one there was only one woman who could use heavy weapons and it was like Barbara and you get her from saving by killing Cliff you can save her but that's not telegraphed at all and I don't know what the deal with that is I guess since you do that fight in a hardware store that's the way you might assume she can do that because you'd probably be giving her heavy weapons and maybe that's why they let her maybe it's a glitch but I don't know how you were supposed to know that honestly the game has a lot of issues where really the difficulty from this game comes from lack of knowledge. Like you don't know where the good weapons are or you don't know there's a healing item just around the corner. That was definitely the case with one where you could just say like tell someone some simple info and all of a sudden the game gets significantly easier. I just recently came across a Mega64 video someone linked to me that came out with the original Dead Rising. And even in there, they said, don't worry, all you need to know, helicopters in three days, there's a katana on the roof, on the canopy. And really, it's just like, when I first started, knowing that, oh, there's unlimited orange juices and a katana up on the second floor, all of a sudden, I was, boom, I was better at the game. I could, I could go kill psychopaths. And it's the same way with this game, where you just don't know the stuff you need to know. He's rocking the mullet in that shot. I think Yuma can get a mullet for Chuck in this one. They definitely have more hairstyles in terms of hats as well. The clothing options have been really branched out. I originally, when I first did my initial run through this game, I did my tuxedo and servot helmet, but the servot helmet is just so massive. It blocks everything in every single cinematic. The stress of all this, along with that horrible medicine. It's a lot for a little girl. So this is going to kick off our second case. Stacy calls you back to just to talk about Katie, but really it's just like kind of a reason for you to be here as she notices TK kind of loading stuff up in on a train in the underground. And that's going to lead us to oh TK might be behind it. As well as this little line here. What? Nothing. Just be careful, okay? I think they try to set up her as like some kind of like love interest for Chuck. And this is one of the reasons I don't like Chuck. Chuck, he just like takes it like smugly, like, yeah. But I don't know, I don't really feel it, because I don't consider her to be that vocal of a character, because she's only around like she's not around that much, and you really only talk to her on calls. But based off her presence in overtime mode, I don't know, I think they want her to be a bigger character. And I think Rebecca fills that role if you do the Frank version of this game. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, check out one of the links below. Till next time, don't take your zombie safety. Bye.
for granted.